Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Adam Cellini. Topping our news for the second straight year, Florida posts a record number of Florida Panther deaths. The main cause, people hitting them on our roads. But according to ABC 7's Kate Flexter, some say the numbers could actually carry a positive message at the an uh, into the animal's future in the state. Road kills are the leading cause of death for Florida Panthers. And as Florida's population grows, those instances become more and more common. Back when I started in the late 80s, early 90s, we didn't even think there were going to be any Panthers left in 2017. 25 years ago, when Bill Samuels started working with Florida Panthers, the wild cats were on the brink of extinction. Today, experts estimate the Sunshine State is home to hundreds of Florida Panthers, and the population is only continuing to grow. In November, Florida Fish and Wildlife documented a female Florida Panther north of the Caloosahatchee River for the first time since 1973. Next thing you know, we've got kittens all over the landscape, and, and, and the population has rebounded. It's really been a tremendous success story. But as Florida's panther population booms, so has Florida's human population. The state is seeing tremendous growth, and the available territory for panthers is shrinking, leading to many panther deaths on busy roadways. It's a good news, bad news. The good news is there's more panthers. The bad news is there's no place for them to live. Biologists with Florida Fish and Wildlife reported a record 42 panther deaths in 2016, with 34 of those deaths attributed to roadkill. So, you know, we've, we've got so many humans in the state of Florida, and when the animal numbers get higher, you're going to have that human animal. Animal interaction. Vice President of Big Cat Habitat Clayton Rosaire says those interactions are inevitable, but says it's encouraging to see the iconic Florida animal finally making a comeback. They're so stunning, so elegant when you see them out in the wild moving. They're, they're just amazing animals and uh, they need all the help they can get. For Samuels, that help begins with awareness. It's not going to be easy. But I think that the future is we could still have panthers in Florida for a long time and people could have a chance to see them. The state has made efforts to prevent those accidents, installing miles of protective fencing and creating about 60 wildlife underpasses. Back to you. All right, Kate, thank you very much. In Bradenton, drivers beware. Two vehicle crashes on the same stretch of 14th Street West causing delays tonight. According to the Florida Highway Patrol, a vehicle crash with injuries occurred around 7 this evening on 14th and 13th Avenue West causing roadblocks. And then just an hour later, a fatal collision on 14th and 49th Avenue Drive West stopping all northbound traffic. An alert has been issued for a Bradenton man who is believed to be armed and threatening to hurt himself. The Bradenton Police Department issuing an endangered adult alert for Khalil Mustafa Graves, who was last seen by his father on Friday riding a gray and red mountain bike. Graves is believed to be in possession of a firearm. Officers ask that if you see him, do not approach. Instead, contact the Bradenton Police at the number on your screen. Now let's head over to Wendy Ross for a first check on that local weather today. Wendy? And we have had beautiful weather throughout the day, and it continues into the nighttime hours. 67 degrees for us right now. A few clouds have moved on into the picture, and you can see that our dew point and humidity levels are relatively high, and so we're feeling that moisture out there as those winds come in out of the southeast at around 6 miles per hour. But the rain is staying away. Right now, the showers are located here across the panhandle, and if you are doing any traveling throughout the morning hours tomorrow, you are going to run into some of this wet weather as you move on up into the southeastern part of the country. In the meantime, we're looking at fair skies here, partly cloudy skies around the region, but we do not have any rain and we're not going to see any throughout the overnight period. We may get some fog that moves in and that could take place during the very early period of the morning tomorrow morning starting at around 4 o'clock. We'll let you know how the rest of this weekend is shaping up because Monday for some people is still a weekend. Adam. All right, thank you, Wendy. A terminal at the Tampa International Airport was evacuated earlier today, causing delays for multiple flights. The alarm was triggered by a bag in, the, in a screening device, causing an hour of delays for international flights. It turned out to be only a false alarm, but when the area was cleared, passengers had to go back through security screenings in order to board their planes. It is unclear just how many flights were delayed due to this evacuation, and only airport side F 
was affected. The rest of the airport continued their operations throughout the incident. New genetically treated mosquitoes could be the answer to the spread of harmful diseases in the state. Officials with the Florida Keys Mosquito Control District and the Florida or and, and Mosquito Mate Company say they can make alterations to mosquitoes that affect their ability to breed. That, that the change only targets one species of mosquitoes, the species most likely to spread diseases like Zika virus and dengue fever. The group's plan to release the genetically altered mosquitoes in March. Well, New Year's resolutions aren't just for people. Businesses on the Sun Coast also setting goals for success in the coming year. We spoke to, uh, we spoke with local small business owner Gia Ventola, who runs a clothing store on St. Armand Circle. Uh, she told us what goals she is striving to achieve. Making this a household name, uh, growing it to the next level, wherever that would be. Um, and just expand all over the world. That's our ultimate dream. This actually took me three years to create, so this wasn't something that happened overnight. It was hearing the voices of the consumer that made this brand who, they, who it is today. And also local historic sites, Spanish Point's executive director says they have resolutions for the new year to continue to teach more and more of the community and visitors on the Sun Coast about Florida, uh, Florida living back in the 1900s. I'd like to see more people coming and more people enjoying this beautiful landscape and this beautiful place, coming to enjoy it, coming to learn from it, and recognizing that this is one of the great destinations of Sarasota County. Mason says in 2016, Spanish Point had 29,000 visitors, a 30% increase from the previous year, and those are numbers they will try to grow in the coming year. Still to come here on ABC 7, a horrifying scene released footage showing the gripping moments prior to the nightclub shooting in Turkey during their New Year's celebration. Looking for something fun to do on a Friday night? Then come to Music on Main, the first Friday of every month at Lakewood Ranch. Enjoy free live music, dancing, great food, and lots of fun for every family member, even the furry ones. Meet up with friends, enjoy activities for the kids, or make it a special date night. And be sure to stop by the ABC7 booth and say hello. Mark your calendars for Music on Main, first Friday of the month, 6 to 9 at Lakewood Ranch. Brought to you by ABC7 and B Sponsors. Monday on ABC 7 News at 7. You kind of don't want to scare them with the bureaucracy of, of three different types of government entities being part of a, a negotiation. It's the question many are asking in Northport. Will the Braves make the city their new home for spring training? We'll have the latest on negotiations. I'm Ray Collins. Find out how the team could impact the Suncoast. Monday on ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We are here for you. On your TV, on your computer, on your camera, on your smartphone, on your Apple Watch. And now you can get ABC7, your Suncoast News on Fire TV. Just go to mysuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab for a list of fast and free downloads that deliver ABC7, your Suncoast News on the go. Monday at 5 on ABC 7, your Suncoast News. How the legalization of medical marijuana is affecting the number of car accidents in HealthSmart. Monday at 5 on ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. Gold fever has once again swept the nation. And everyone is rushing to Florida to strike it doubly rich. Introducing the $5 million Gold Rush Doubler. We're doubling cash prizes for over $752 million in payouts. And 36 prizes from $1 million to $5 million. The Florida Gold Rush is on. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. 
In Turkey, at least 39 people are dead and nearly 70 more injured after a gunman opened fire inside a nightclub earlier this morning. A quick warning, some of the video to follow is disturbing. ABC's Jennifer Eccleston has the story. Gunshots and chaos in Istanbul. Graphic videos capturing the moments during a gunman's rampage, both outside and the terrifying moments inside a popular nightclub. Here you can see the killer holding his weapon, walking around. A witness turned on his cell phone, trying to hide near several parked cars, a different angle from the club door. People ducking and running, then a ricochet off the railing as the gunman approaches, firing one last shot at the man in red before going inside. By the time the first ambulances arrived, it was too late for the dozens killed at the scene. I don't know. I saw one person. They're shooting. I'm hiding. Them, so. Now a massive manhunt is underway for the gunman who escaped and anyone else involved. This man says he made eye contact with the shooter as he arrived. He says the killer first targeted police and security, then bystanders. A local resident says many people mistook the gunshots for New Year's fireworks and rushed to the scene. And people were uh, falling down. The Turkish prime minister visited with survivors in the hospital. One man telling him it happened fast. As soon as he heard gunshots, he got down on the ground. Funerals for the victims have already started, with dozens more to come, even as the hunt for the killer continues. Jennifer Eccleston, ABC News, London. Sources tell ABC News that at least one American citizen was injured in the attack. Well, in Chicago, one of the bloodiest years on record, ending with over 700 homicides and more than 3,000 shooting incidents. Police releasing crime statistics today that reveal rampant gun violence. Not only were there nearly 300 more homicides and more than 1,000 more shooting incidents than the previous year, but the total number of homicides was the highest since 1997. Statistics showing that the bulk of those killings occurred in, the, in five of the city's poorest neighborhoods. And here on the Sun Coast, the Bradenton Herald reporting a record-breaking year of homicides in Manatee County. The total number of homicides for the year coming in at 22, eight of which occurred in January alone and three of those happening on New Year's Day. The Manatee County Sheriff's Office able to solve all but three of those homicides. They say that was in large part due to, the, to more cooperation from the community during their investigations. Miami-Dade police say four adults and three juveniles were taken to the hospital after they were shot outside of a Florida home this evening. Police responding to the scene in, Little, in the Little River area where they say the victims had been standing outside when a vehicle approached and an unidentified suspect opened fire. One of the victims, a 17-year-old, is listed in critical condition. The rest are listed in serious conditions. The driver of that vehicle remains at large. Police have found the first item that may be from a missing small plane near Cleveland. They say a bag washed ashore on Lake Erie near Brattonall, Ohio, this afternoon, but there's no confirmation the bag is from the plane that disappeared over the lake on Thursday night. The air, that aircraft had six people on board, including a family of four and their neighbors. Five vessels and a police helicopter are all looking for the plane. The Obama administration has deported over 200,000 immigrants over the past 12 months, a 2% increase from 2015. But while the number of deportations was greater than last year, it was a sharp decrease from 2014. The statistics released on Friday showing that 58% of those deported had criminal convictions. Well, 2017 is beginning about the same way it ended for President-elect Donald Trump with questions about Russia and hacking. President-elect Donald Trump speaking out at his New Year's Eve bash in Florida Saturday night, once again questioning U.S. intelligence that confirms Russia hacked the Democratic Party last year and interfered in the election. The president-elect promising a revelation later in the week saying, quote, I also know things that other people don't know. You'll find out Tuesday or Wednesday. It's uh, indeed overwhelming, and the president-elect, as you know, also said that he knows things that other people don't know. He needs to stop talking this way. 
Trump will meet with intelligent officials this week to discuss those reports on Russian hacking, and it's just 19 more days until Trump's inauguration. Police say two environmental protesters will be arrested after their stunt at an NFL game earlier today in Minneapolis. They climbed almost to the roof of the U.S. Bank Stadium and rolled out this banner today. The message urging the U.S. Bank crowd to oppose the controversial Dakota Access Pipeline project. Police say those protesters later came down and they will be arrested following a medical evaluation. The game between the Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears was not interrupted, but some spectators were moved from their seats as a precaution. The pipeline has drawn backlash because opponents say it could damage the environment and some historic Native American sites in North Dakota. And at least they didn't decide to streak with this protest, oh my goodness, which is common Look at sporting events. Up they got. That's just amazing. Yeah. That is really interesting. Equally amazing. brave, in my opinion. Oh. I don't know. Uh, that's, a, that's a long way up. <laughs> that's a long way up. Well, I have to tell you, our temperatures were a long way up, too, today, <laughs> because it was another hot one. We got up into the 80s once again. It's you know, toasty. it was supposed to be 71 yeah. for crying in the sink. But he hello, look at this, 81. <laughs> 81, that was our daytime high today. And you can see what our overnight low was. It was chilly once again, at least by Florida standards. It was chilly. We're supposed to be at 52. We were actually a little bit warmer than that with 56 degrees. It certainly beats the record that was set back on the state in 2000 of 30 degrees, but we weren't as warm as 85. So that's good news, and we are going to continue to see our temperatures staying on the warm side for a little bit longer. 67 degrees right now with some clouds having moved on in. The humidity is high. Dew point levels are also moving up, and those winds are causing all of this humidity and the feels-like conditions that we've got outside with that feeling of moisture. You can feel it in the air when you walk outside. So we're looking at temperatures right now that are mostly in the 60s and, and 770s over the north central part of the state. But take a look at Key West in Miami, very close to 80 degrees even at this hour. All of us now seeing our temperatures in the 60s across central Florida. And as you get farther away from the water into the center of the state, you're seeing some cooler uh, readings. But along the beaches, we've even got a 70 degree reading in Venice. Now all the wet weather is staying well to the north of us right now. We've got a cold front that's situated across the southeast and it's just staying there. It's stationary, so it's not moving in across the area, but the rain is going to continue to fall across the panhandle and move towards the north. We're not expecting to see those showers coming on in here, at least not anytime soon. So central Florida is going to stay pretty quiet, at least throughout the overnight time period tonight. And then by tomorrow, we've got a 20% chance of rain. And that's for a stray shower to come on in, nothing extensive. So what we do have is this low pressure system that's moving along the front. And you can see that it's just stuck right here across the southeast. And this high pressure system helping to bring in this warm, moist air that's moving in across the state of Florida, giving us those warm conditions. And then we've got cold fronts that are going to be moving on in across the country. And when that happens, we're going to experience that towards the end of this upcoming week. So we are going to get back to more normal conditions for this time of the year. But over the next couple of days, we're going to see mild weather. We're going to get more humid, and we're also going to be seeing our rain chances increase. And this is what I'm talking about. Over the next couple of days, we've got a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain through Wednesday. The next cold front comes in late on Thursday, and we are going to feel it on Friday. Adam? Coaching changes and broken records on the last Sunday of the NFL regular season. Sports is next. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. Our community has its struggles. The fact is, people have less than they did just a few years ago, and sadly, the need becomes more profound every day. Season of Sharing provides funds to help individuals and families in need, ensuring they will not end up homeless and without a roof over their heads. Together, providing a helping hand and making a difference. Season of Sharing. Give today at cfsarasota.org. 
It's time to upgrade your favorite news app. Now, ABC7's My Suncoast News app is better than ever with a dynamic brand new design that's faster and easier to use. Stay connected with new features that make it easy to submit photos, share stories on Facebook and Twitter, and save stories for reading at a later time. Download our free My Suncoast News app on your mobile device at your app store. ABC7's all-new My Suncoast News app. Just another way we're here for you. Powered by the I Associates, providing sight for life. Have you ever wondered what it's like to save a life? Find out by donating platelets at Suncoast Blood Bank. I'm Haley Wilgus, ABC7. Platelets aid in the clotting process and are vital in the treatment of cancer and surgical patients, trauma victims, and critically ill newborns. It's tough to keep enough on the shelves because they only last five days. To donate, call this number or visit scbb.org and you can help save a life. ABC7 congratulates Suncoast Blood Bank on 65 years of serving our community. The agents at SWC would like to show you pictures of all the homes that they've sold quickly for their clients. But they're just too many to show. Contact SWC today and find out for yourself. We just market your home better. by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas Traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. Now, sports. There won't be any playoffs for the Buccaneers this year, though they had plenty to play for today. The chance to end their season on a high note and with a winning record for the first time since 2010. Jameis Winston telling fans he would attack their finale against Carolina like it was the Super Bowl. And with the game tied in the fourth, he delivers a 10-yard dart to who else? Mike Evans gives Tampa a 7 Point lead. But the Panthers weren't done. With 20 seconds left in the game, Cam Newton hitting Winston's old FSU teammate, Kelvin Benjamin, for a touchdown and a chance to tie the game. Head coach Ron Rivera saying, No thanks, we'll go for the win. Two point conversion try, no good. Greg Olson slipping in his route, no flags. Tampa wins their finale and finishes the season with a 9 and 7 record. In Miami, Tom Brady giving the Dolphins a nice little test before their playoff berth next week. And in the first quarter with a seven-point lead, Michael Floyd fights through one, two, three, four, five would-be tacklers to get Brady his second touchdown pass of the day. Matt Moore is no Tom Brady, but he is undefeated in his three games under center this season. He hits a wide-open Kenny Stills there to cut the deficit to six, but later in the third, New England responds again. Help from the receivers. This time it is Julian Edelman turning a six-yard pass into a 77-yard touchdown. The Patriots locking up home field advantage, and the loss means Miami will face the Pittsburgh Steelers on Wild Card Saturday. The Denver Broncos won their final game today, but likely lost their Super Bowl winning head coach, Gary Kubiak, reportedly saying goodbye to players in the locker room after a 24-6 victory against the Raiders today. Players later confirming that Kubiak's departure will be due to health concerns. The 10-year head coach suffered a mini stroke during his last season with Houston in 2013, and earlier this year suffered a complex migraine following a loss to Atlanta. Here was the coach's statement after the game. I'll tell you about the team and the players. I'll, I'll address my situation tomorrow, but I did have a really good moment with the players and just told them how proud I was of, of them and the way they finished, you know, so, but I'll address everything else tomorrow. Kubiak's departure will be the fifth head coaching vacancy to open up in the league so far this season. More to come here on ABC7. Stay with us.
At SWC Properties, we pride ourselves in providing to you the very best in customer satisfaction and the secrets getting out. Maybe that's why so many people have chosen to list their homes with our friendly and qualified agents. After all, it only makes sense to list with a growing agency that markets in so many places. To list your home with SWC, give us a call at our office and ask for Beth Ann Muley. Designers do it with style. Tell me what's going on here. Because Why you don't like my hair? The Mark and Mandy Show. In-depth design ideas. What is up with the tuck tape here? Let's cover it up. Amazing beauty and fashion tips. So Halle Berry has amazing skin. She Her secret it. is coffee ground. No. Delicious recipes. Today I'm going to show you a special dish that is sure to please that special someone in your life. Watch the Mark and Mandy Show right here on your favorite channel. <laughs> Thanks to my volunteer, I am a better reader. Thanks to my volunteer, math seems simple now. Thanks to my volunteer, I discover new career goals. I'm a volunteer for Sarasota County Schools, so I know I can make a difference. And you can too. Give an hour, change a life. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. Hello, I'm Don Brennan. And I'm Jacqueline Matter. The average person spends more than half of their day sitting down. And Monday on Good Morning Suncoast, a new study that shows certain risks for men who sit down too much. We'll have that, Josh. And we'll have some rain relief coming our way, and we'll talk all about it on Monday morning. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. Are you a food lover, restaurant goer, or home cook? Then check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, and helpful step-by-step -step videos. And you'll love the restaurant guide with direct links to your favorite Suncoast eateries. Whether you're cooking in or dining out, whet your appetite with tasty tips from Chef Judy at MySuncoast.com slash dining. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. In 2016 claims one last celebrity actor, William Christopher, has died at the age of 84. Best known for his portrayal of Father Mulcahy on the beloved TV show MASH, Christopher died Saturday morning due to deteriorating health. I'll just get through the motion, okay? Uh -huh. Mariah Carey, better luck next year. The singer off to a rough start after she was caught lip syncing during Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and Eve with Ryan Seacrest. It all started with some apparent technical difficulties during her live performance last night in Times Square. She stopped singing her song Emotions, paced the stage, and eventually just told the audience to finish the lyrics for her. And in Los Angeles, locals awoke this new year to find a prankster had altered the famed Hollywood sign to read Hollyweed. Police <laughs> are investigating the incident. This after California voters legalized the recreational use of marijuana back in November, and that starts in 2018. Oh man, somebody was really up late last night. <laughs> a year early on that. I think. Wow. But hey, fortune favors are prepared, I guess. Not Hollywood weed yet. We'll see you guys uh, in the morning. <laughs>